In this video, I'm gonna show you a process that I use in order to be able to scrape people's websites, in order to be able to get their sitemap, which includes all of their different pages that they have on their website, so that I can do competitor analysis, so that I can find leads, so that I can do pretty much anything that I need to get off of their website. If you want a copy of today's workflow, simply click the link in the description below to go to our free school community where you can download this and a host of other useful N8N workflows. Once inside, you'll find all of our free downloads in the classroom, as well as instructions on how to set everything up and all the tools you'll need to get it running, as well as a host of other helpful N8N tutorials. And if you think this is gonna be helpful for you, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like and share the video, it really does help. So I have a, when executed by another workflow node here, I have some data already loaded up. The only thing I really care about in order to get this process to work is that I have a website. And so I've uploaded my website here and just put that right in there. And what we're gonna do is it's gonna run through this process. It's going to go and look for a whole host of different kinds of possible pages where your sitemap might live on that website. All right, now it's not fully complete. There's all kinds of different providers who have different structurings, but I have a whole host of different versions here. Uh, it's, kind of, it's like 28 different possible uh, extensions for that page that the sitemap might live on that we're gonna test. We run them all through an HTTP node and the ones that come back as valid, we'll see that they have a page associated with them. And then the rest are just gonna have some sort of like 401 or 403 error. Basically, that's just not gonna be a valid page. So we'll go ahead and kick those out. We filter them using a code node. And in the same code node, we're gonna go ahead and process which is the most likely to be the one that has the actual page list. Because sometimes you'll have something like sitemap.xml, but that's not really the sitemap. That might be a sitemap for sitemaps on their website. But you might have it like sitemap-1. You see that on WordPress sites. Um, if they're using Yoast, you might have page-sitemap.xml. Or if you're using uh, Wix, I think it's pages dash sitemap.xml and so we have this all that's loaded up into this code node and it's going to try to find you the one page that is the most likely to have the pages on it and then we use um this http node in order to be able to pull that information and then an xml node to go ahead and extract all of the information and that'll give us all of the pages off of that person's website or that company's website. And so let's go ahead and take a look at it node by node, show you exactly how it's set up. And this again, this is just an execute trigger node or when execute by uh, workflow node. I have one field called website um, that's being passed to this code node. This code was written by ChatGPT. I don't know how to read code, so you know it is what it is. But basically I give it a whole bunch of different possible sitemap locations that you might find on their website. So we have, uh, what's this, just common site cat, uh, sitemap routes. We have uh, Yoast ones, Wix, we've got Jetpack, um, and then it can increment if it wants, um, sitemap one, sitemap two, sitemap three, and so on. And then we go through and it, it does some process to be able to attach all of those to the URL, and then it creates a list of those URLs along with the base URL. So what was the main website URL? All right, and then we have uh, the output sitemap candidates. And so we got 28 of those. Those get passed to this HTTP node where we just run each one, one at a time. And either we get information, so we get our XML sitemap information, or we get an error. And so here we see a 429 error. So it's an Axios error. Um, so it's just not gonna get any of that information. It just doesn't exist. That page does not exist. And so we'll get, well, what we do is we then run it through uh, one of these two edit field nodes. If it is a valid website, we pass forward the base URL, we pass forward the candidate sitemap URL, and we give it a status. In this case, it's valid. And if it's invalid, guess what? It's gonna be called invalid, just like that. All right, we then merge those together, merge everything together, give it all of the data into one big list. And we pass it through this code node. This code node, again, what it's doing is it's gonna just kind of kick out all the invalid ones. It doesn't really care about those. And for the valid ones, it's going to check them against this priority list here. Again, you can always update this priority list if the kinds of businesses that you're reaching out to or scraping off of have a different structure. 
The ones that I have found for uh, WordPress websites for Jet, if they're using Jetpack, um, it's sitemap one. If it's Wix, it's pages sitemap. If it's Yoast, it's page sitemap. And then just generally, if otherwise there isn't any other sitemap that was valid, sitemap.xml is usually it, unless it found something else that was a valid sitemap, in which case it'll it'll pump out that one. And then it just returns that information to us with a, a, a field called sitemap. So here we go, it gives me one of them for, for uh, mine. In this case, it was this one. And then we pass it through an HTTP node one more time, input the sitemap, it gives me my XML data, and we run it through this convert uh, from XML to JSON node. So it's an XML node, uh, mode is XML to JSON. Our output is gonna be called data. And so it just goes ahead and gives me all of my different URLs. Now, if I come over here, to uh, this URL that we got right here, my sitemap one. My actual sitemap for my website. We'll see if I came here, this was my sitemap, and yeah, there it is, that's, that's exactly right, and here's all my pages. Perfect, now to show you what happens if you don't do this dash one, if I just go ahead and do, erase the, that, it'll give me a sitemap, but again, it's a sitemap for sitemap. So we have sitemap dash one, image dash sitemap dash one, and video dash sitemap, uh, sitemap dash one. Now, and those aren't actual pages. They're, again, just more lists of pages. And so that's not helpful. That's why we go through this process. Let me see if I can't find my workflow again. Yeah, here we go. We go through this process in order to be able to get all of that information and get the right information so that we're scraping the right data. And if you're serious about building AI automation tools into your business using NADN, be sure to check out our advanced community where we give new tools each week that will actually make a difference in your business. This is where we keep all of our exclusive tools and resources for committed business owners looking to ride this AI wave. In addition, you'll get direct access to me to help you through your setup and tech issues, our business building course library, and so much more. And as always, I'm Bradford Carlton. Let's automate your success together.